All right, let's do this. So continuing on through chapter five here. Um, last lesson we talked about points of concurrency, um, you know, with perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, medians, you know, what those all were, finding the in centers, the circum centers, all that stuff. So what are those points of concurrencies of a perpendicular bisector? Well, that is the circum center. The angle bisectors, the in center, and all the medians is the centroid, which I still think is a cool name for something. Now, we're kind of going to jump back to stuff we did last chapter where we were writing stuff out, but we have negation. So negation of a statement is the opposite truth value. Usually involves adding a not to a statement. So you think of negation. Negation is usually something, think of like negative or something bad. Well, negation, all it really is, is just flipping the truth value. So if it was true, it'll become false. If it was false, it'll become true. So for example, the sky is not green is a true statement. Negation of the original false statement of the sky is green. So sky is green is false. We use negation, make it true. So if we had the statement, lines M and N are not perpendicular. So either it involves putting a knot in or taking a knot out. So in this case, to negate it, we're going to take this knot out and say that lines M and N are perpendicular. So we can negate it by putting in a knot or we can negate it by taking a knot out a lot of times. So inverse then negates the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional. If you think back to a conditional, a conditional is an if then statement. So if we have the statement, if the figure is a square, then it is a rectangle. The inverse would be if the figure is not a square, then it is not a rectangle. So inverse just negates the hypothesis and then it negates the conclusion. Contrapositive of a conditional then switches the hypothesis and conclusion as well as negating them both. So contrapositive would be if it is not a rectangle, then it is not a square. So tying back to here. So if the figure is a square, then it's a rectangle. So we swapped them to say the rectangle first, then square, and we negated them both. So it's not a rectangle, then not a square. So if we have the statement, if it is geometry class, then Mr. Wheezy is the teacher. Well, the inverse would be if it is not geometry class, then Mr. Wheezy game is smelling on William is not the teacher. So, if it's not geometry class, then Mr. Weezy is not the teacher. Contrapositive will switch those and have the not. So, if Mr. Weezy is not the teacher, Then it is not geometry class. So if it's not geometry, then Mr. Weezy is not the teacher. Well, okay, let's go back. So if it's geometry class, then Mr. Weezy is the teacher. Well, that's true because I'm the, the one at St. Fran that teaches... Um, geometry so if it's geometry then I'm gonna be the teacher that's true so the inverse of if it's not geometry then mr. Weezy is not the teacher well that's not true because I teach other classes 
However, if I'm not the teacher, then it's not geometry. That would be true because again, I'm the only one that teaches geometry. So if I'm not the teacher, it can't be geometry. Now it doesn't say what it is, but it says, hey, if I'm not it, then it can't be this. Now, equivalent statements have the same truth value. So that's where I was talking here. The conditional was true, the contrapositive was true. So those would be equivalent statements. So a conditional and the inverse may be both true, but they may also be different. One may be true, one may be false. The contrapositive, however, will always have the same truth value as the conditional and will always be conditional state or equivalent statements. So conditional and the contrapositive will always be the same. So if it was geometry, then Mr. Weezy is the teacher. If it's not Mr. Weezy, then it's not geometry. Both of those true statements. So if you think back, the conditional there, or P, arrow, Q, if P, then Q. Negation is symbolized by the little squiggly line here. And I remember what that's called exactly. I think it's like a tilde or something. Anyways, uh, so the inverse would be not P, then not Q. So contrapositive, not Q, then not P. Now, to shift gears a little bit here, we're going to jump into indirect reasoning, which is going to consider all the possibilities and then all but one of them is proving false. So that's the only true possibility. So in a way it's saying that, hey, everything else doesn't work, so it has to be this one. So an indirect proof is a statement and its negation are often the only possibilities. We wanna narrow this down so that, hey, it's either this or it's that. And we're gonna show that one doesn't work, so therefore it has to be this. So when you write an indirect proof, first you're gonna state the assumption, which is the opposite of negation of what you wanna say. Yes, I know what assumption stands for. And you don't like to assume, but that's how these work. So you're gonna assume opposite of what you're trying to prove. You're gonna use the information that you're given to show that the assumption leads to a contradiction. It doesn't work. Now, to represent contradiction, a lot of times we're just gonna use the two arrows pointing back and forth saying, hey, they butt heads, this doesn't go. They're both trying to go the opposite ways and it's not gonna go. So then you conclude using these three little dots, which means therefore, you conclude the assumption must be false and therefore what you wanna prove is true. So, first step is the assumption. So. All of these are going to start the same way. You're going to write assume. So what we're proving is where you're going to negate. So what we're proving here is that quadrilateral QRWX does not have four acute angles. So we're going to say assume quad QRWX does have four acute angles. Now, that's all we're focused on right now. We'll get into the other stuff later. But for right now, first step, you'll always write assume, and then you'll write your assumption, which is going to be opposite of what you're proving. So if we're proving that it does not, we're going to assume that it does, because we only want two options with this. Next, a triangle cannot contain two right angles. So again, we start with assume. And so since our proof was that it cannot contain, we're gonna assume that it can. So a triangle can contain two right angles. So, we're going to assume that it can, and then we'll show that that doesn't work, so therefore it can't. 
Now, if we go to that next step, as far as the contradiction goes, we want to see which two statements here are going to cause issues. So this equal angular is over here. So if we start off, can a triangle be acute and be scalene? Well, a scalene just means that none of the sides are the same length, but it can be acute. So those two can go together. Can we be acute and be equal angular? Well, yeah, on an equal angular triangle, all three angles are 60 degrees, which is an acute triangle. So that works. So it has to be B and C. Or put the arrow saying B and C contradict. Why? Well, because of this. Equal angular means all three angles are the same. And if all three angles are the same, then all three sides have to be the same. Well, scalene says that none of the sides are the same. So one saying none of them are, and the other one says all of them are. That's where the contradiction comes in. One says one way, the other one says the other way, and clearly they both can't happen. So, let's do one. So full on proofing it out here. So, Given the cost of two items is more than $50, prove that at least one of the items costs more than $25. So first step, assume. Always start with that, with an indirect proof. So our proof is that at least one, so the opposite of at least one, so at least one means one or more, we want to be less than one. So we're going to say assume none of the items cost more than $25. Okay. So assume opposite of what you're proving. We're proving at least one, which means one or more. So the opposite of one or more would be less than one. So in other words, zero, none of them cost more than 25. Your next statement will start with then. So we assume opposite word proven. Well, what does that mean? Well, if that's the case, then it's going to be opposite of what we're given. Well, opposite of given is, so the given is the cost of two items is more than $50. So the opposite would be then the cost of the two items is not more than $50. Because if you think about it, we're doing two items. If neither one is more than 25, they both have to equal 25 in order to be 50. And if they're not even 25, then they have to be less than 50 together. So first you assume opposite of what you're proving. Then you assume opposite, or then not assume, but, but then opposite of what you're given so that that's a contradiction and so we put the two arrows saying hey that's an issue because it said that hey they are more than 50 so what we've said here is this so assume that none of the items cost more than 25 well if that's the case then the cost of the two items is not more than 50 which doesn't go with what we were given saying that it does so therefore that's our contradiction and we say our three little dots therefore and then we just write the proof so therefore, at least one of the items costs more than $25. So assume opposite what you're proving, then opposite what you're given, contradict, show the symbol here for contradiction or write out contradiction. So we put the three dots, therefore, so it's saying, hey, that didn't work, so guess what? This has to be true, that at least one of the items costs more than 25. And that's it for this lesson. So, uh, questions, comments, concerns, sorry. Um, email me, pan me, send me a message on Google Classroom. 
Remember, you can always pause if you need time to write stuff down or rewind if you need to hear something again. Otherwise, until next time, we'll talk to you later.